Hey everybody, Galusia here, and today I am going to quickly, try to quickly, I failed miserably several times to do this quickly, explain how I plan on doing my reviews on this channel. So if you're new to the channel, really quick, I'll just let you know that my plans and intentions for this channel was to play a lot of survival games uh, in a let's play format and then review them so that you guys know exactly what I think of it after you know having played it for quite a while uh, and so I'm just choosing to use Astroneer bonus footage as my background today for this explanation because frankly I don't like being all big on the screen and like try I don't that's not my style so just enjoy some Astroneer while I explain it so for the reviews that we're going to do on this channel I'm not just reviewing the game itself uh, although I am uh, but, you know, like most reviewers, when they review a game, they break it down into categories where they'll say, oh, like, you know, this is like how good the story was and the graphics and the sound qualities. Um, I'm still going to do that and I'll tell you about it in a second. But the focus of this is survival games and how good are survival games. So a big focus of mine is the just purely the survival elements of the game. So I'm going to be breaking this down into two main categories. The game itself, as it would stand as like a normal game review, and then the survival elements. So each of those two main categories would be able to score up to a possibility of 25 points. So the game's total score could be 50 points if it was like a perfect game, right? So the game category being broken down into five different categories as I slowly move my spaceship is going to work out as this uh, the first category is concept so concept means like the overall concept and idea of the game like how original is the idea how well is it executed uh, as well as the story which goes really big in part to how well is it executed because the story is a huge part of that uh, the second category is graphics how good are the visuals of the game how good is the environment design uh how's the hud because i hate an overly intrusive hud that gets very frustrating and how are the character designs meaning like your character that you're playing as and how are the like npc designs the enemies of the game things like that the next category is sound so that one's going to be uh environmental sounds the ambiance of the game you know like if you're in a forest like can you hear you know bugs can you hear birds chirping like you know things that you would expect to hear in certain environments like can you hear them uh the character designs the sounds that they make do they talk like whatever uh the and then sounds that the npcs make the enemies uh whether it's sound effects or you know are they talking or whatever uh and and then player communication does the game have any kind of built-in player communication if it has a multiplayer function and how useful is it um, most games fail pretty miserably on that category. So then the next category is playability slash replayability, uh, which really just plays into the controls of the game, uh, how easy it is to control your character and interact with the environment. Uh, the inventory system, most survival games have some sort of inventory system to manage all the things you're using to survive. So how easy is that to deal with like how functional is it are there any bugs or glitches in the game that are like so bad that it's actually like breaking the game like is there anything that's actually like affecting the game on that kind of level where it like makes it difficult to play um and then just the general replayability of the game like how much do you want to keep playing the game over an extended period of time or if the game has some sort of ending like how much do you want to play the game after you've done that ending uh, do you want to redo it again? The last category is just a general category of entertainment. Uh, how entertaining is the game? Like, is it fun to play? Sometimes, like, a game can, like, be kind of bad, <laughs> but still be fun to play. You know, there's there's certainly a fun factor, and I think that should be taken into consideration. So that's the first category. Each of those are worth five points. So that's where we get our, ter our total of 25 points. And then the next category is the survival category so again that's purely just the survival elements of the game so for that 
I wanted to highlight what I think even just like defines a survival game as a survival game. So for me, what makes a survival game a survival game is the following. In a nutshell, a survival game for me is defined by a game that requires you to have some sort of a necessity for a finite resource that can eventually kill you that's not environmental so i'll use seven days to die as a quick example and seven days to die like there's zombies that can kill you and the zombies don't make it a survival game but what does make it a survival game is that the there is a need for food or water because those are finite resources if you run out of food and you starve you die and that's purely environmental so that's that's what I like to look at when I'm deciding like okay like does this qualify in my head for what I would consider a survival game and that's what I'm using to break down the reviews of those games. So starvation is the first category. How realistic is the starvation and what what are we looking at in terms of food? Like is there a good variety of food? How do you get the food? Stuff like that. Same with hydration, like the requirement for it, how realistic is it, and then how are you getting it? Um, that's really important to me, like the ways that you get it. Um, I'll use another quick example. Like in Ark, you can just drink any water, which always kind of like weirded me out. And like, I mean, animals are doing their business in there and like there's saltwater animals swimming around in it. So I would assume that it's saltwater, but then I guess maybe it's not because they're not interacting. I don't know. So, um... <laughs> So the realism of the water source is important to me. Uh, asphyxiation is your need for air. And asphyxiation by itself is a tricky category because it doesn't necessarily mean that if you can like die from suffocation, it makes it a survival game. Uh, you know, like you can drown in GTA 5, but GTA 5 is not a survival game. I would never categorize it as such. But what it is, is, you know, if the game's core element is based off of your need to breathe then that does make it a survival game like astroneer astroneer is a prime example of that oxygen is constantly a finite resource and you can die from it it's like the whole fixing point of the game so for that it does make it a survival game then and that's when asphyxiation comes into play other survival games though that have you know like you can drown for example but it's not a main point like it's still worth reviewing it it's just not the main point of the game so the next category is fatigue. So this would either be your need for sleep or your need for rest. Like, does your character have stamina? If so, like, how finite is it? Do they have to actually sleep to recover it? Or are they recovering it in some other fashion? Like, or is it just like one of those things where, like, you gain stamina over time from just sitting there, right? Like, that's what I want to know about. And then environmental, which I'll be frank, I had to shoehorn a couple things into environmental. Environmental is primarily the uh, danger from uh, heat, cold, radiation, toxic gases, anything like that. Like the if the game has uh, a realistic, you know, cold area and you can die from the cold, like I, I like that. I like when the game, you know, takes that effort. The need for a shelter. In some games, you absolutely like you have to take shelter. Like being out in the elements for too long is problematic, and, and there's an actual like demand for you to actually take some sort of shelter, which I appreciate. And then this is where I'm shoehorning a bunch of stuff into it because uh, crafting and building, in and of themselves, are not necessarily a survival game necessity. You can have a survival game that doesn't have crafting or doesn't have building. But just about every single one does. So I wanted to add them to a category. And since like a need for shelters and environment building, like, so I'm, I'm including it in that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that like, again, it has to have that for you to consider it a survival game. But I feel like the category is at least at very, very least worth mentioning in that it's, uh, it is a condition that can usually exist in a survival game. So again, all those categories are going to be uh, five points each. So the total survival category is worth 25 points. So again, add all those up and what you're left with is you're left with uh, a total of 50 points. So that's how I'm gonna be reviewing all my games from this point forward. So 
all the reviews that I do, like I, I'm at the time of recording this, I'm overdue for reviewing, doing my first review for the forest because I kept <laughs> failing to make a video that I liked because I needed to explain how I'm doing my reviews and then do the review for the forest. And frankly, it was just taking way too long. So anytime I do any reviews in the future for my survival games, uh, use this as a reference for how and why I am reviewing it that way. So you have, you have to look forward to the forest review. That's going to be out next week. And then uh, Astroneer's review will be right after that because that series is coming to an end. So again, thank you everybody for coming out today and watching my video about reviews. And so now you know how I'm going to go about it. So now you know the system. And if I see anyone commenting in future review videos saying, I don't understand this system, I'm going to slap you. So thanks again, everybody. If you're new to the channel and you like the uh, idea of this review system, you have a lot of reviews to look forward to. I'm going to try to do at least one review a month. It's hard to do more than that since I'm doing a long factor, like, you know, tr test trial thing. But um, hit that subscribe button and definitely hit the bell icons so that you know exactly when these things are coming your way. And, um, yeah, I look forward to making a bunch of reviews for you guys. Thanks for coming out, and I will see you next time.